You know, as you've heard this morning a few different times, I want to read a prayer of Jesus. It's called the High Priestly Prayer, and it's in John chapter 17. And here's what Jesus says. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, I and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you. This is Jesus praying. Holy Father, he says, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. And so as Jesus and the Father was one, this is a very specific type of oneness, not just a shared humanity. This was different. Jesus said, as he and the Father were one, would you make my body, would you make the church, would you make us one? And so in 2021, there is much that we should ask God for. He is a good father who loves to give good gifts. And so there's much petition, there's much prayer that you and I can ask God for. But there's just one thing that Jesus prayed for each and every one of us. And it is that through a move of the Holy Spirit that we would be one. 2020 saw us more divided than almost any other time, not in history, that's too big of a statement, but definitely in my history, in my life, 2020 was more polarized than I have experienced before. I'm not sure about you, but through a move of the Spirit, we need Jesus to make us one. We need Jesus to highlight what unites us, not just what divides us. We need Jesus to move fresh on our hearts, not where we're pitted against one another, but where we sit and try to listen to one another to hear what God may be saying in and through each of our hearts. You know, for this prayer to be real and not just some ethereal thing out there, it's going to require something of me and it's going to require something of you. It's going to require a drive in me and a drive in you in 2021 to be with, to become like, and to do what Jesus did. The days of generic Christianity are, they're over. They're dying. They don't work. It is this united heart of followers of Jesus, not just I have a religious affiliation, not just I go to church, and not just I log on 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 a Sunday morning, kind of like one eye open looking at it. No, 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 no. It is this drive to be with Jesus, to become like Jesus and to then do what Jesus did to be more like Jesus. And being me more like Jesus means that you and I have to embrace spiritual disciplines. We have to surrender actively to the Holy Spirit. This is not some, again, thing out there. It's a real thing that we do each and every day. We also have to take authority over the work of the enemy. And we have to commit to living life rooted in a Jesus-centered church community. These are things that are so vital in 2021. And there's a rhythm to this move of the Holy Spirit. I want you to use your imagination with me today. Wherever you are, I want you to use your imagination. I want you to imagine that you are driving a standard car, a, a car with a manual gear shift. And I want you to imagine yourself driving that vehicle as you shift effortlessly from first gear all the way up to fifth. And even into reverse, it's, it's effortless. It requires, though, there's movement to the car. It's not automatic, it's movement. You're actually shifting the gears. You're engaging the clutch, but you're actually driving the car, moving all of these things. I want you to imagine that you're shifting those gears up and down and you're doing it flawlessly. Now I want you to imagine something that we can't do. And I was going to say a joke, a political joke here, but I'm not. But I want you to imagine yourself standing on a beach. Now do you see the political joke I was going to make, but I didn't. Although I may have just did, but I didn't. I want you to imagine yourself standing at the beach and you're watching this beautiful rhythm of the ocean coming in and going out and going, coming in and going out. You're watching the tide come in and then the the riptide begins to pull the ocean out. There's something just about sitting beside and just listening to the, the, just the tide again come in. The waves crash and then recede back into the ocean. The rhythm of that, there's something just beautifully calming about it. Same picture, although adjusted just a little bit. I want you to imagine that you're driving that same standard car, only instead of shifting from first to fifth, you keep it in first and you just keep hitting the accelerator. You're going to burn out that engine. I want you to imagine you're standing on that same beach and you're watching the tide come in, only this time there's no rhythm to it. It's simply an incoming tide and there's no outgoing riptide. There is no recession of the ocean. What is beautiful 
can become absolutely devastating. It's called a tsunami. See, life is all about rhythms. It's about shifts. It's about movement. Knowing when to do what. What to feed and what to starve. You know, being, Jesus, uh, being Jewish, Jesus lived into different cultural rhythms than we do. We often find a gear and then just hit the accelerator and we hold on that. You know, we as a culture live with this whole idea of just more. Better is always more. And it can be a tsunami of stress and anxiety to our hearts and lives. But being Jesus, uh, being, I did it again, being Jewish, Jesus, that's really hard for me to say this morning. Uh, Being Jewish, Jesus lived into different cultural rhythms than we do. His life was structured in different movements and shifts. Jewish people have feasts, but they also have time to fast, time to work, and then a day for rest called Sabbath. You know, Sabbath was this shift. Most of us work, 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 and then we rest. But for the Jewish people, they would rest and it would start their week, and then from rest, they begin to engage work. But today, I want to talk to you about a shift that you've heard mentioned already this morning, and it's 21 days of prayer and fasting. Now, 2020 was a year of tremendous loss. And just because the calendar changed doesn't mean we're out of the woods quite yet. doesn't mean we're out of the pandemic season that we find ourselves in. And so a question that we even wrestled with is, is this the right time and season to focus on fasting? Because it's been such a year of tremendous loss. But we felt this resounding yes, that it's not just an individual fast, it's a church-wide continued corporate fast because fasting helps you and I to fix our firsts. You know, how many know sometimes in life you do by doing and other times you do by not doing? And so a fast is something that you're going to pull away from your life. You're going to set aside for 21 days. You're not going to do it because you want to do something else with the time or the space that this occupies. You know, in fasting, again, we starve something to feed something else of of greater importance in our lives. We do this in other areas as well. In tithing, we starve greed so that we could feed generosity, that you and I can be men and women who are generous. In Sabbath, we starve production in order to feed presence. That's the heart of Sabbath, that while I'm not working, I can trust that God still is. In fasting, again, we starve something, food, social media, Uh, It could be TV, it could be whatever it is that you choose. We're going to get into some specifics in a minute. But in fasting, we starve something to awaken a focus. We adjust, we shift our hearts afresh on Jesus. Here's what Jesus said, or here's what the scripture says in Mark chapter 2. It says, now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. And the people came and said to him, why did John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast? but your disciples don't fast. So why are they fasting? And Jesus, why are the 12 who are following you, why are they not fasting? They should be fasting. And Jesus said to them, can the wedding guests fast when the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But then he said this, the days will come and we are in those days now. The moment Jesus ascended, we were in these days. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them and then They will fast in that day. So we are in that day where fasting, this spiritual discipline, is an important thing for you and I to engage at the beginning of 2021 that we fix our firsts, that firsts are important to Jesus, the first fruit, the first of our week, and even the first of our year that we fix our firsts. Again, firsts are important to Jesus. It's not just my leftovers. It's not just when I get to it. Firsts are important. So as we're into these new days of 2021, we want Jesus to fix our first. And again, a discipline like fasting is doing what we may not always want to do, but we do it in order to be who we desire to become. Fasting can show you and fasting will show you how strong something is in your life. 
And oftentimes, here's what happens in a fast. So for every one of you, I'm going to give us a call to action in just a few moments to join a 21-day fast. As we engage this, some of you may fast 21 days and you may do it flawlessly. Others of you may fast 21 days, but there may be a stumble or two along the way. Here's what I want you to do, and here's what I don't want you to do. When you stumble, or if you stumble, I should say, or if you fail, or if you say, I'm going to fast this, and you have a moment of weakness where your willpower is just not enough, there's two directions that you can take. You can absolutely abolish, and you can throw away your fast, and you can look and say, well, I'm a failure. I didn't do it. So in other words, if you do that, fasting is still all about you. It's still all about all those things. Or you can have this as a moment of surrender. You can have this as a moment of realization that, right, if I want to change something in my life, I am some places powerless to change certain things that my intellect, that my knowledge, that my education, and that my willpower are not enough, that I need a full move of the Holy Spirit. So if there's a moment of failure, if there's a moment of weakness, that shouldn't remind you of who you are. That should remind us of who we have in Christ. How much we need the fullness of the Holy Spirit so in that moment yes we can say God would you just forgive my weakness but don't let it be just a a moment where it ignites your failure let it be a moment that draws to you this is why I need the Father this is why I need a move of the Holy Spirit these things are too strong as you can see even in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus turned to his disciples and said could you not just pray for me with me for an hour oftentimes doing very simple things we see how not just selfish we are but how strong or how ineffective just our willpower is. If you set a fast and you fail, let me say it very specifically, use it as a reminder of how much you need Jesus, not of how weak you are. If you need a fast to figure out how weak you are, you just aren't paying attention. I don't need a fast to know how weak I am, how frail I am, how fragile I am. I don't need that. I know that every single day. And here's the really honest truth about all of our hearts and lives. There are things in each of our lives that if we are honest about it, changing our lives is really hard. It's not easy. It's not three steps and six steps. It's not just try these little things and transformation comes. It's really hard sometimes to get out of habits and mindsets. It's hard to get out of breaking out of generational cycles. This is how I've always done it. This is how my family's always done it. Just because my family's always done it this way doesn't mean it's God's family's way. All of these things in our hearts and lives, we can't just change them because we read a tweet or a book or this. It's hard. We need some of these things broken off of our lives. Again, as we surrender to the Holy Spirit, as we take authority over the works of the enemy, as we absolutely root our hearts in Christian community, get feedback from others, prayer with others, engaging. It takes a full body of Christ engaged together for you and I to see transformation. Fasting is firmly planting ourselves in the finished work of Jesus and praying for the unfinished work of Jesus to be present in our lives. And that's what I was just referring to. All the different things that I just preached through a moment ago. This is all the unfinished work of you and I desiring transformation in our hearts and lives. Desiring Jesus to be and to do and to shift and to move and to change and to transform. It's this unfinished work of our hearts and lives. But fasting is planting ourselves in the finished work of Jesus and then asking him to move in these unfinished spaces of our lives. I love Bishop Robert Barron. This is the question that he asks himself every single year when it comes to focusing on a fast. He asks this, which path makes me most generous? Which path in my life makes me less selfish and more generous? Now, generous, don't only think about it financially. Sure, it can include that, but think about it generous with your time or generous with your kindness, generous with your compassion, Generous with not keeping the truth of who Jesus is to yourself, but sharing it with others. Which path makes me more generous? Other questions where God and the enemy move simultaneously in our lives that we should ask ourselves could be this. What causes you, when you begin to dream about, Lord, what would you have me fast? Or why would I fast? Or why would I engage this? Well, I want you to look at the world. I want you to think about the world right now. I want you to think about this city. I want you to think about what you see on social media. What causes others pain? What causes them tears? What causes, when you look at the world, what pain in the world pains your heart? 
how could Jesus desire to use your life to make a difference in that area? Well, you and I need to be transformed people if we are to live in this move of God and see transformation where there's pain. So that's an area that you can not just ignore. You can say, God, where is that area? What creates distance between us and God? What creates distance in my life? This is another question that you can ask yourself. What creates distance between us and God or others and God? What creates distance? And so it could be, again, it could be sports that it just creates distance. Your life is filled with too much sports or it could be too much online shopping or it could be too much social media or it could be too much food or it could be too much complaining. I don't know, whatever, but it just creates separation. The things that you intend to do, you never get around to do them because it's not even these are bad things. They're just things, but they just continue to get in the way. That's another thing that you may want to ask God or look at. Where is there death in our lives and families in this world? Where should there be life, but there's death? Where are there dead dreams, dead relationships? Where should there be life, but there isn't? There are only death. This is an indicator. Another question is what needs to die so something else can be born? And lastly, as I said at the beginning, where is there pain in our lives, our family, our city, our world? Asking God to move into these spaces is a vital, vital thing, but it requires you and I to be transformed. Jesus said that because of all these things, it is much too important for you and for I as followers of Jesus to not fast and pray. We should fast when the pain of what is or what could be in Jesus breaks our heart. We should fast in that place We should fast when we experience distance between ourselves and God. We should fast when we experience distance between ourselves and others, unnecessary distance. We should fast when we are struggling to walk in obedience with something that we know that God is asking us to engage in. Fasting is not trying to twist God's arm in your favor. No, 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 no. You abide in Christ if you have given your heart to Jesus. You abide in the affection of your heavenly Father. You don't need to twist his arm towards your favor. His affection is always moved in our favor. He is for you, not against you. Fasting is not trying to do that with God. Fasting is not trying to get God to turn his position different to us. No, fasting is you and I changing our posture towards him. It's not the other way around. He's never turned his back on you. Pastor Jetson Franklin compiles, if you look through the scriptures, you can see nine different types of fast. There's more than that. But the disciples, they fast when They want freedom from a specific sin area. Ezra fasts when he is experiencing financial trouble. Samuel fasts for national revival. This is what you see all through the scripture. Elijah fasts when he has negative emotions and feelings and habits. If you know the story of Elijah, it just took one person to say the wrong thing to him and it absolutely wanted to take him right out. Widows fast for the humanitarian needs of others. Paul fasts when he's going to make major decisions in his life. Daniel fasts for health and healing to be different from those around him, as you see in the book of Daniel. John the Baptist's fast. Esther fasts. So all through the Old Testament and the New Testament, you see followers of God and then followers of Jesus. You see them fasting and praying so that God would use them in the midst of pain, in the midst of brokenness, in the midst of many different things in their time and in their season. So what type of fasts can we engage with? Well, you can do a full fast. You can drink only liquid juices or smoothies. That's called a full fast. That is something that you can do for 21 days. You can do a partial fast. You can do a Daniel fast. You can give up one food item or one drink item. Some of you, God may put it on your heart to, you know, okay, you're not going to have coffee for 21 days. So you're going to have headaches for 21 days. Okay, you're stronger than that. All right, he may call you to give up a food item or a drink item or a social media or a sporting event or, you know, I'm not going to watch Netflix or whatever it happens to be. Um, You can intermittent fast. You can only eat, let's say, from 12 till 7 and then the rest of it you fast. So there are partial fasts. You can engage a fast in any which way you desire. 
And then there's what we're doing, which is not an individual fast. Though it takes every one of us, we are going on a corporate fast, which is we're calling the whole church to 21 days of fasting and prayer. You can do whatever devotional you want. You can go on Right Now Media and get whatever else you want. But we want you to be praying the same prayer focus that we're going to be sending out on our socials and our email list every single day. Um, You can also download, if you're going to fast socials, you can download it on our website. You can print it and then you can just track with us over the next 21 days. So with any type of fast involving food, let me just say this with both ears and your whole heart listening. With any type of fast involving food, it is imperative though that you consult your doctor. If you're ever going to go on a full fast, um, faith isn't being foolish or reckless. Your body's a temple of the Holy Spirit, so treat it as such. All right? So you need to be really, really wise when it comes to full fasts. And in this season, I would also say that you need to believe God to do extraordinary things, but you have to also pay attention to your mental health because we are in lockdown. We are in a pandemic. And so there's wisdom required in here. Once again, faith isn't foolish or reckless, but it is saying no to something so that my heart can be awakened to someone, to Jesus, in a greater way. And so what kind of fast or what fast should you embrace? Well, I want you to go back and personalize some of the questions that we've looked at today. What is creating unhealthy distance between you and God? Holy Spirit, bring revelation right now. What's creating unhealthy distance? Could that be something that you fast? Could it be just too much comfort and entertainment? Could it be food? What could it be? What could it be? Ask God for clarity there. Could it be socials? Could it be any of these things? What's creating unhealthy distance? You're just just numbing. It's just mindless. It's just taking up too much space. Again, it's not that it's a bad thing. It's just taking up space that you want to intentionally regain at the beginning of 2021. Here's another thing, question you may want to ask is, where am I struggling to walk in obedience to something God, that's something God's word has made clear. So let's just say that you just can't help yourself. You just gossip all the time. And you know it's sin. You know it's wrong, but you just can't walk in obedience. For 21 days, you may set a fast to say that every single day, rather than criticize or gossip, I'm gonna actually be silent or I'm gonna celebrate only. I'm going to put a guard over my mouth. And over 21 days, here's what you may find. You may find you do 17 days really well, and then whatever the math is to get to 21, I'm not trying to figure it out on the fly here. It's a little joke. But you may find some failure. You may find, oh, shoot, I called so-and-so, and I meant just to be encouraging, and then there I was gossiping again, once again. You can go back into a cycle of failure and woe is me, but then your fast is still all about you and your affections aren't on Jesus. Or you can actually see, maybe, just maybe, I can't change this without the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Maybe I need to surrender to the Holy Spirit. Maybe there's a stronghold of the enemy in my life here that needs to be broken. Maybe, just maybe, I need better accountability in my life. And it awakens not just what you aren't, but what you need. Let God use all of this as feedback, as revelation to our hearts so that we can be more like Jesus. And lastly, what is the pain in our world? What is breaking God's heart? And so that could be racism. That could be um, a million different things that you see pain in the world. Here's, though, the powerful thing, the powerful restraint of not only seeing what is broken in the world and rushing to make a difference, here's what I see on social media a lot, is it's easy to post. It's harder to be a transformed person who brings actual difference into these spaces. It's easy to draw a line and get an audience. It's easy to tear someone down. It's easy to create us and them. It's easy to deconstruct. All of these things require little effort but it takes great effort to see pain in the world. But then before you rush to say, God, how can I bring transformation or healing? Sometimes between pain and God using your life, there is a divine pause where he needs to change you once again so that when you are put into these spaces that you are actually transformed and that which you touch, like Jesus, 
becomes more like Jesus, not that you and I touch it and we become more like the world. Here's a great question that I would ask some of you in this season who are in a season of deconstructing. Are you taking, here's what Jesus did. Jesus took the word of God himself and he deconstructed culture. You see it all through the Sermon on the Mount that we went through in 2020, the end of it. Jesus said, oftentimes, you have heard it said, but I say to you. You've heard it said, love people who love you. Jesus came along and said, no, 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 culture, you've got that wrong. He's going to deconstruct it. Don't just love people who love you. I've called you to love your enemy. Here's what we do, what is different in our day, is we are taking the message of culture and we are deconstructing church. We are deconstructing Christianity. We are deconstructing God's word. We have reversed this thing. So it is my prayer that you would be inspired by God's word. And then from there, God, how can I be transformed and changed? Not that you would be changed by culture and then look back and deconstruct this way. All of these things are happening in the church that we need to pray and we need to engage with our whole hearts. It doesn't mean that things don't need to be deconstructed. But how we do that is important. So yes, there can be pain. But in our effort to rush out and do that, sometimes there's a divine pause where we need to be transformed. Because for Jesus, fasting is directly tied to prayer. Directly tied to prayer. So don't just fast. Use that time to fast, but also pray. All right? There's a great book that we're going to put out on our socials, this in particular for you uh, who may struggle with prayer. It's just called like living room liturgies. It's just crafted prayers that you can just read and begin to pray. Do you know that God doesn't care if you read it off of a page versus if you just spontaneously freestyle in prayer? God, not one is more powerful than the other. You may need a prayer prompt to begin to read through. That's okay. All right. It's not about performance. It's about presence. And so that's all right. So directly tied to prayer, it arises out of gratitude, and then it's grounding in faith. For us, fasting opens our ears to hear and our eyes to see Jesus. Fasting produces spiritual resiliency. It helps us die to our flesh. It helps us see, man, that area was stronger than I thought. It had a stronger hold on me than I actually really thought. I'm not going to drink coffee or I'm not going to eat that. And then that's all you're going to crave and you're going to realize, man, I didn't realize how strong that was. Lord, help me to die to those things. And it sets us up to better shift or to move in the rhythm and following the Holy Spirit. So as I've mentioned a few times, we're going to be using Life Center Socials, uh, giving us targeted co- corporate prayer focuses each day during the 21 days. We're going to be sending them out on email so you have them. Uh, Monday to Friday, as Pastor Lori should, said during our announcements, uh, we're going to be doing live devotions at 9 a.m., but you can watch them later. If you're not fasting socials, if you are, then we'll see you in 21 days. Um, But we are going to use Instagram and Facebook, Life Center's Instagram and Facebook Live, just Monday to Fridays at 9 a.m. But again, you can watch them whenever you want throughout the day. Um, But the whole thing that's anchoring this is the prayer, Lord, make us one, that Jesus prayed in John 17. As we seek you and as we seek you by fixing our firsts, Lord, as your church, would you make us one? So for this to be realized, it requires something of you, something of me. What will you fast for the next 21 days? What we, we, we know what we're going to pray. We're going to send that out. But what will you fast? And would you join us by remembering that fasting is giving up something you love for someone, that's Jesus, you love even more. And so every one of us is online right now. So in the chat, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, or church, you know, church, our online church online platform, here's what I want you to do. If you will fast with us, if you and your household, your kids are there, uh, you're going to say yes to this, then we want you to put a hand up in the chat. We want you to kind of a call to action. Right now, just put your hand up in the chat. Say, yep, I'm with you. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. Just like when you were sitting at church, if you said, okay, everyone stand up, put your hand up. How many are going to engage this? Walk to the front. This is a call to action moment. Lord, would you just take note that you and I are all going to engage this? And so together, let's pray. Father, with our hands raised, whether it's in chat rooms or live in the space in your house, Father, with hands raised and hearts open, we admit, Father, that we are in some ways powerless to change certain things in our lives. Father, we confess, though, that you are all-powerful 
and that Jesus, the transformation that we seek is in us dying to our flesh and simultaneously coming alive in the spirit. Father, we want to be not only skillful at deconstructing, but building what you're calling us to build, whether it is bridges or houses of your presence. Father, we pray that these next 21 days would be supernatural. Whether we get through them flawlessly or whether there are some failures along the way, Father, we root in the affection of the Father. We root and we abide in the affection of Jesus. And then from this place, Lord, whatever the next 21 days shows and surfaces, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, God, that you have not left us as orphans, that you have given us the fullness of your Holy Spirit. You've given us the power of one another, that we can reach out for prayer, that we can reach out in accountability, that we can reach out just, I failed in this area. Would you pray for me? Help me pick up again. Help me start again. Help me not root in failure, but root in the affection of the Father. Jesus, we pray that you'd help us fix our firsts. Lord, for your church, for Life Center, would you fix our firsts in this time and in this season? In your name we pray, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Well, may the Lord bless you and may he keep you. And we look forward to seeing you and worshiping with you, not just next Sunday, but Monday to Friday on Facebook, Life Center's Facebook and Life Center's Instagram. And also, if you want to say, God, would you grow my heart in sharing my faith, then join the three-week life group and allow God to put some tools in your toolbox of how we can, you and I can share our faith. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless you and may he keep you.